became apparent within the opening minutes, Mur, that it was a little bit different. As Burke says, Ulster have been getting wins without necessarily blowing people away. But there was a kind of an intensity to them, a bite to them, like a snarl that kind of felt like the Ulster teams to which we would have grown accustomed over the years. How did they go about it to you in, in terms of actually upsetting Leinster? Because that's what it was. Well, I thought that their, as you say, immediately apparent mindset was a bit of a contrast to Leinster's. I thought they were, I thought they were dozy, to be honest, in that kind of first quarter, especially. And I actually thought Leinster were kind of blessed to be so close in, in the game, given that Ulster, again, like, as Richie Murphy said, they seem to be making a habit of not quite getting the, the tries done and dusted in those last couple of inches when they get very close to the line, getting held up. And, and that kind of thing is a bit, bit of a team emerging now, but... I mean, Leinster were kind of, they had a few let-offs. <clears throat> Ulster had a few kind of let-offs in, for, for Leinster in that first quarter. Even if you think after, what, a few minutes, there's been a, a few Leinster errors. Healy's had a knock-on when Byrne kind of fires the pass at his head. And then Russell, Rob Russell, thinks that the, the play has stopped. And he's standing still, and, and the ball's still in play. And, and it's a pretty bizarre kind of scene. He gets blocked down. Lowry very nearly scores there. They, they call it a simultaneous grounding. So there, straight away, is, is a bit of a let-off. There's the one where Lowry gets pinged for the, the double carry where he tries to get up and go again. And, and when you slow it down, you can see his knees on the ground. But again, that's really close to a, a try. And that comes from Will Addison. Just He goes through Al Alatoa and James Ryan, I think it is, for a line break where you never really kind of see one. Even off the back of that, Cooney should have probably just passed to the left. I don't think he realised that Ethan McElroy was uh, kind of burning up on his left-hand side. So that was a let off again for Leinster. They they got over obviously through through Herring in the end on the Mall try, but even after I felt like Leinster were making mistakes that gave they gave um, Ulster chances to, to get into the game. And and in contrast, the Leinster scores kind of came in the blink of an eye, really. You know, there's the Will Connors block down and they score off the back of that. And the only really excellent bit of rugby they put together uh, results in the, the Cormac Foley try. So um yeah, I thought I thought it was a game where Leinster's mistakes were almost the most um, standout feature for, for me and I did think Ulster were good and, and you're so right Birch they, they were brave at the end weren't they to actually go and stop that kick exchange yeah. I think Doak goes at the line Stewart comes around the corner and you knew that John Cooney was just absolutely waiting for that chance in that moment he was loving it he, he loves those nights in, in Belfast so yeah I thought it was a poor I actually thought it was a very, a very poor Lancer performance and I thought Ulster actually could have won by more it, it was more Exciting, obviously, for all of us that it was it was tight and tense, but yeah, I thought it was I thought it was bad from Leinster. It's interesting, Murray. So I I said a couple of months ago, or, or, uh, uh, Leinster's strength and depth isn't where it was, and it was like blasphemy. I mean, Leinster fans uh, just wouldn't accept it. But I think if look at it, it's probably likely now Leinster aren't going to finish top. Um, I'd say maybe finish third, will they? Um, mm. Yeah, and like. That's that's a step back um in where they have been over the last four or five years. So like I don't think I think in this you in this league we've been used to then to being able to send any team anywhere and mainly win and but certainly be be competitive. And obviously they were very they were competitive against Ulster, but in South Africa they were they weren't competitive. I think that's worrying for them. I don't think that they'll overly care. They made the decision to target Saturday. Um mm. and but I think they hoped Obviously, it would have been far better to to win and be top two. Um, I also think, uh, I think in that game, the decision to go for the corner and not go for not not try and get a four point lead. Like I, I felt they didn't need the bonus point. I mean, their points difference mm-hmm. is better than Munsters. Um, you know, you back themselves to get whatever they needed out of Connacht when the Europe said it away. So I know Leo said afterwards, oh, you know, the players have to have a feel for it, but. I think, I think effectively, if you if you are taking that as a knockout rugby type scenario, which everyone else was doing, you know, um, I just think you 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 take your points there, and you make Ulster score a try, which at that stage they were less likely to do. I don't know, I don't know how you feel. I think early in the game Ulster looked dangerous, um, but Leinster's defense started to actually look a little bit better, more controlled, and it was really only a penalty I was worried about or a drop goal, you know, uh, you know, in terms of changing the game. So, I think that's probably an area. Look at. They won't be overly concerned. They'll back themselves with their main players back to win away from home if they have to in a final. But you've lost out in revenue um, 
potentially as well later on in the season. And obviously you've decreased your chances of, of winning it. So if they were to lose Saturday and Saturday, it puts massive it makes it harder for him, you know what? And yeah. uh yeah. But I uh, look at it's um Yeah, and that's like since this game, that's how I've been kind of thinking about it. Cause like there's a few performances like this from Leinster this season. They've had some absolutely brilliant performances on the on the big days. And if they win one or even two trophies, which is still quite possible, they'll feel that they can go and win the Champions Cup and then it's only the URC knockouts and that's all they have to focus on. They won't have to balance both. Well, then it's an amazing season. But as you say, if they don't get that done, then those underperformances do become an issue. And it just, I'm trying to think about it, like, are they not, are they just not investing as much of their time and effort into these these games that aren't going to actually win them the trophy? I, I don't know. I'd love to, I'd love to hear the, the unvarnished truth from Leo Cullen and, and Jack Nienaber or whether they're actually worried about it. Because like, it's a good team they put out. There's loads of quality there, but I actually think quite a few of those players underperformed. Like it's not some callow under 20 C team that Leinster put out there. It's stock full of international players, but lots of them didn't actually play that well. And they didn't actually look like they had a great plan. I didn't think they didn't look like really well coached team. If I'm being really brutally honest and, and, and that's kind of weird to say about Leinster because they've always looked really well coached and really tuned in on on most match days throughout the season. The yeah, to, to go back to that penalty decision, I thought it was mad. Like, there's so long left in the game. It's 68 minutes. It's not like you can run down the clock and finish there by trying to score, or else you just keep the win. There's still 12 minutes left, so you have plenty of time. Like win the game first, and then try and get your bonus point. Yeah. I, I thought it was a bit disrespectful, kind of, to to the game as a contest, which is really live at that point. And geez, it was a gimme three points. Take twenty seconds over the kick if you want, because you're getting the ball back then. And you can use your kicking game to get downfield. I, I thought it was a weird one, to be honest. Um, and listen, yeah, they'll say we were feeling in the moment that we had a bit of momentum, but I didn't think I, you know, I didn't have that same sense watching it really. Um, so I, I thought it was one they'll definitely regret and. I guess to learn from it. There's probably going to be a few big decisions to come this weekend as well around penalties and and when exactly to go for that killer blow. So um, yeah, I'm sure they'll have reflected a bit on that. It was an odd decision for sure because if they won the game, all they have to do then next weekend is match Monsters result and they top the table. And in reality, again at home to Connacht, you'd imagine that would be distinctly possible, particularly when Monster are playing what we now believe is a pretty strong Ulster team. But disrespectful, or could you expand on that? Just, I don't mean that disrespecting Ulster. I just thought their view of the game was obviously very different to how I viewed. I thought they were in an unbelievably tense battle that they just needed to win, no matter how. And I, I don't think a bonus point would even really been in my mind at that stage. Um, so yeah, maybe I'm being a bit strong with that use of the word disrespectful. But I, I just thought you need to focus on winning the game first and foremost. Nail those kind of match points that you get from that and yeah bonus would have been amazing but I, I just felt there was enough time to get a better margin give yourselves a bit more breathing room and then maybe go after that that try um I thought I, yeah I thought when they were when I was watching it live I think I was just thinking this this is too early to kind of go for that killer blow I I, I felt 